Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Today, I wanna to put up some butter. Prices in the stores have really gone up. And when I think about things that I don't wanna run short on, butter is one of those things. Now, I have canned, pre-bought, freeze-dried butter. But when I put it on a piece of toast, it doesn't taste like butter to me. So, although the USDA does not recommend canning butter as an ex-dairy farmer, I've been doing it for a while. So stay tuned. So what we'll need to do to put up some butter is have our canning jars. And on the canning jars, I use the half pint jars. And you can see this is listed right on the side of the package. When I am putting up salsa, anything that has liquid. I like to open my canning jars just by scoring around the edge. Of the jars. And then removing the top. The reason that I do this is because this way I will have the extra layer of plastic just in case, God forbid, there is any kind of leakage. So I'm going to have uh, 24 half pint jars, two, four, six, eight, ten pounds of salted butter, and five pounds of unsalted butter. The reason why I don't use all salted butter is because I just find that it's, it seems a little bit extra salty to me. So I'm trying to cut down on my salt, and so that's what we're gonna do. So stay tuned. My jars have all been sterilized. Now, for every one pound of butter will be one half, one half of a pound of unsalted butter. I'm gonna cut the butter up, put it in the jars, and show you what's next. So here's what I do. I open up both sticks of my salted butter and one stick of unsalted butter. I simply just cut them in pieces Mine are still frozen. Partially frozen. Put them in the jar. Then I will bring it to the microwave. and put it on for 41 seconds, both jars, as you see right here. Both of these jars were put in the microwave, each with one stick of salted butter, until they were melted. Then I came, cut the unsalted butter in half and put it in until it was melted. And you will see that this comes right up to the rim of the jar. You can also see that the milk solids are on the bottom and the separation is on the top. It doesn't matter. You do not have to stir it. If you stir it, you have the possibility of leaking on the top of your jars and you don't want to do that. So I'll be back to show you what's next. While I am microwaving my butter, I am cutting up my next few jars. To prepare it. This three sticks of butter will fill two half pint jars. So here we are once again. Now, can you see my link below? on how to make butter from scratch. The USDA 
will not allow anyone to recommend that you do this. This is actually how they keep us going to the stores as well. But what did our grandparents do? I mean, they didn't have stores. And yeah, we know that they churned butter. But even in the life of a cow, a cow only has milk so much a year. So they canned butter. They canned butter for centuries. And the thing is, is they say that we shouldn't do it because there's protein in butter. Have you ever read the back of the box of the butter? It says that there's zero protein in butter. They say that we should can it at very high temperatures because there's protein in butter so that when we're canning, we should treat it as a meat. But as you can see, protein is absolutely zero grams. And yes, there is fat in it. So I am going to process this and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. But here's what I do. So I put one stick in each jar. On my microwave, it works out if I leave it in at one, 110. And then I take it out. I have already cut the unsalted butter in half, so I'm even. Cut it in small slices, fill the jar up, and it comes perfectly. So stay tuned. At a minute 10, when I take this out of the microwave, it's still not all dissolved, but it doesn't matter. So that's when I put the rest in. Put it in for one, one zero. So here we go. I did not get to use all of the butter because the story of my life is that I ran out of jars. So I take my lids, I put them in warm water over the stove. I don't want them boiling. The whole purpose is to just let the rubbers get warm. I like to just kind of dry it off just a little bit, but there's still gonna be some water on it. And I just put my lid over the top. prevents me from touching the lid. And when I do that, I just add it to my collection. So, as I was saying before, I have bought um, freeze-dried butter from Augustine Farms. And I use that when I'm doing like mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, because butter is fat. And fat does not dehydrate well. I'm not saying it's not possible because I have dehydrated bacon. Um, somebody gave me a bunch of bacon when they did a hog and you can only eat so much bacon. So I dehydrated a bunch of it for my dog and it was a great treat, you know, for my dog. But fat and dehydrating does not go together. So, you know, today they actually have freeze dryers that you can buy, except they're very expensive because they're new. So there's many ways to do this. I declare and say history repeats itself. So what did our ancestors do? Now they used the churn, they did the shaking with the arms, and they survived. So once again, while I cannot recommend that you do this, because the USDA does not, 
I made my own personal choice to do it. Butter dairy products, you know, they lead us into the stores. We have to go to the store on a regular basis because we need dairy stuff like milk and orange juice, butter, and for me, cat food. So, because my little girl down here at my feet. So, butter is just becoming outrageously expensive. And I choose to like real butter in my food. So stay tuned, and I'll show you what I do next. So praise God. We're going to process this. This is called a hot water bath. The only reason why I'm doing this is because there is fat in the butter. So you can see in my canning, there is a bottom piece, which I will carefully put the jar in. This is to prevent breakage. And I am going to load my canner up and I'll show you what's next. Now I'm sure that many of you have canned before, but for those who haven't, I have placed 12 jars into my canner and I've separated them so that they are not touching each other. As they process, they're all going to bubble and jump together. But this is how you properly load a canner. So I have 24 jars, so I put 12 in. So I will have to process two times. I'm gonna keep this on medium high heat and I'm gonna let them process for 35 minutes. So the first load is out of the canner and it comes out still separated. So this has been out now for 15 minutes. And even though when I put the water in the canner, I put some vinegar in there because my water is really hard. You can see even the spots on the stove where the water has dripped and even here. So what I do now is I just take my dish towel and I shake it. Now, I will do this approximately every 15 minutes until it's cool and solid. See the difference? Here is our butter. It is finished. We have 24 jars. Done. Sealed, washed clean. Now it's important for all the newbies to make sure that when you check, nothing is popping up that you are sealed. The reason why I take the screw tops off is because it can give you a false seal. When you store your jars on top of each other like that, it sometimes will jar the seal loose. But if the screw is off, it's so easy to check. So there it is. I hope you enjoyed this, this video on canning butter. Please like and subscribe. And I look forward to your comments. And if there's anything you would like to see, please leave a comment below. Mm -hmm.